to go around the semi-professional clubs that exist. What it might mean is those players end up at Coventry, the Scholars, Gloucestershire maybe, Oxford. Teams like that might take in some of those players, the, the stronger ones, yeah. okay, and the weaker ones that are, were never really going to make it anyway will go to the level that they belonged at anyway. So what it might actually do is strengthen the other teams in that area with Southern-based talent, potentially. So that you'll have a team built with, with, with stronger Southern-based talent. So that might work in, in the favour there. Mm. Um, what it also... The question for me is, the Hemel Stags as a club, as its identity, is in the community club, not in the semi-professional club to my mind, and they still run age groups all the way through to open age. We know this from yeah. our updates we've had all year. Right. So if that pathway is still there for those people, then when they get to open age level and they're playing at 18 years old and they're showing promise, yeah. they go and play for Oxford or the Scholars. Rugby League down south doesn't lose those people. The Hemel, the Hemel Stags lose those people. So, the he, so Hemel is a semi-professional club will struggle because it will lose its fan base, yeah. okay, and it will lose its local connection to the club. But the Hemel club that exists behind that will possibly still remain strong in its community game links. So what we might lose is a semi-professional club down south, which is a shame. Hmm. And, there's, and, and the comments about it being a performance-based league now is crap. For, as far as I'm concerned, the, the, the eight split they've put into it, into that level, does does away with that idea. Yeah. Because you can still achieve some modicum of success whilst being a development side playing against other development sides in the latter part of the season. Yeah. So that totally convinces me that that part of the Hemel's argument is, is a load of old rubbish. Yeah. But... That said, I do think other clubs down there could benefit from this. And if Hemel slots suffer because of the choice, that's their choice. They're not going to be able to put together a team good enough to get promotion. No matter what. And Dewsbury probably wouldn't even let them, to be honest. Because them players won't stay. So they won't... If, even if they did get every single best other player and they got managed to get every player that could end up at Keithley or Hunslet or... York or wherever, or Doncaster or wherever, it's not going to happen, let's face it, but even if that could happen, right. the ideal dream situation for, for Hemel, they'll go up, loads of those players will be lost to them, and then they'll come back down, and then then where will they be? So I don't see how, they're, gonna, like... I don't see how they're going to gain from it, but I certainly think that other clubs should be looking down down there should be looking yeah, that's, not, that's not the fair, they that's not fair on the other clubs, that's not fair on Hemel though right, like Okay, so... But Hemel have made the choice, so if it's Hemel, not fair on them, they've made their own bed, Thomas. No, they haven't made their own bed. There hasn't been a, a vote, has there? There hasn't been, like, a broad straw poll been held by Hemel fans. I think a couple of things... No, no, I'm not talking about Hemel fans. I'm talking about the owners of the club. Yeah, but that. But if they want to but if the... they want to say sod off to all the fans, yeah. that's their choice. If they want to ruin it for themselves and for the fans and for the club, that's their choice. Yes, that is their choice, but do they not have some kind of moral responsibility to their stakeholders not to do this. Yeah, but if they want to do it, let them do it. They'll look like dickheads yeah. when it goes wrong. Yeah, they're going yeah, to gonna look like dickheads, but they're not the people that are going to lose out. It's going to be the people that get behind this, what I'm saying this club in Hamel. I don't believe those people will necessarily lose out. There's, they can go and... The rugby league is growing down there. Rugby if league is Keithley so much bigger Cougars, down there. If this was Keithley Cougars setting up and doing this... With with the Jewsby rounds yeah. and all that, we'd all be we'd all be up in arms. But because it's little Hemel, no one gives a no one gives a shit. No, I, I feel do really give, sorry for no, that. No, I do give a I shit. I know you do, but it seems like away from kind of. I don't you know, know where you're getting that impression from. All we've had is criticism of this. Yeah, from the people that are directly associated. But no one big associated with the games come out and said. We need to know exactly what the crack is going to be with this, and are hell relocating? Why? Why have they made these decisions? Why has there not been, you know, someone looking into this? This has clearly been, you know, put together and signed off by someone. And I feel, I feel, yeah, Hamill CEO Bob Brown, you know. And I, and I take your point about the thinning of the herd and and what have you, and that other clubs will benefit. But that's a very Machiavellian outlook to have on it. I think in terms of. You know the impact that this does have on fans of the the top tier of the Hemel 
organisation. And as much as, you know, they can, they do have a lot of strong community links and they bring people through and they bring these young players through, if ultimately these lads at sort of 14, 15 are already looking at, am I going to go to Oxford, am I going to go to here, am I going to go to where, what's to stop them at 13, 14, 15 getting tapped up by someone like that? And then all of a sudden you, you, you chip away at the soul of a club, potentially. And what I think we should actually be doing is, is trying to protect these these organisations not ring fence them and make sure that they're in you know impervious well, but allow them community club won't be moving but we we can't necessarily say what impact losing there and we'll call it their, well, their, that's their like tier saying one Wigan warriors go and rip out the soul of Wigan St Pat's every year that's that's not that's not a sensible argument that, or no because Wigan St Pat's is in Wigan it's a part of the Wigan community mark. But as the Hemel Club, as a community club, is part of the Rugby League so, Down South so let family. Them, let them draw on the Hemel Community Club and the local teams. Right, they've chosen, these they've chosen work. not to. So let all the other clubs reap the rewards of that system. I don't think you're defending it. I'm saying I'm as frustrated as you and annoyed by it. I think it's. I. Th- I, I just. I feel very, very sad for Hemel Stags that this is happening because it's. Where's, where's your buy-in? Where's your, where's your local era? Where's your one? No one's going to be chanting he's one of our own because Carl Price turns out for Emerald Stags next year. Carry water bottles on for him. I mean, there's no the, rugby league is about local lads playing for your team and, and local eras as much as anything else from a traditional point of view. All of a sudden, Hemel Stags is a Hemel team in name, but all the lads come from you know M62 corridor sides. That's not fostering another avenue for potentially, you know, the next young southern star to come I, I completely agree with you. So what, we're not arguing then, are we? We're just both up in arms. In a different way, though. Right, OK. I'm thinking let them fail if they want to choose to do this. I don't I don't have the doom idea of the club below, yeah. the semi-professional club, that you seem to have, that's, to be honest. That's my worry, is that it impact, it, the ripple effect of this has, has a deeper and more cutting impact than we can foresee at this point on now things... Go to hell. And it's a shame for a community rugby league team. It would be a shame for any community yeah. rugby team to go that way. Yeah, I but there's, there's plenty of clubs around to hoover those people up, you know, the <laughs> know, Bedford Tigers and the St. Albans Centurions. And, and I'm sure Hamels fans are delighted to be helping someone else out. It's, it's just, it, it seems like the owner of a club. Right, fans of rugby done... league down south are, are all fans of rugby league first, fans of clubs second, I would guess. I would guess. Not if you're a St Albans Centurions fan. <laughs> they fucking hate the Emerald Stags. Yeah, so they'll be... So there's they're rivalries. They're exactly, they have rubbers around together. That's not fair. Shall we move on? Because we both kind of don't yeah. like it, but we seem to be bickering about it, so I don't understand. Um, okay, um, staying in League One, then. Uh, Keith the Cougars have confirmed that coach Paul March will leave the club following Sunday's game against York City Knights. March has led the club to the iPro Sport Cup title this year, but after failing to make the top five in League One, it has been confirmed the Cougars will part company with March after this weekend. In a statement, Cougars chairman goes... Gary Fawcett called on all fans to come to the Knights Clash on Sunday and thank March for his service as the club bid farewell to their coach. We've been expecting this, haven't we? So um, yeah, it's, it's not a big surprise. Keith Lee, have, whilst winning the iPro Sport title earlier in the year, they've, they've disappointed in large in the league and yeah. we were expecting this. Yeah, very much so. Uh, New South Wales State Police are investigating alleged max fi- match fixing in Australia's NRL players hold and on have we missed one out here I have I've gone sorry because it says North Wales Crusaders and New yeah. South Wales I've, I've it's the yeah. capital N and the Wales and stuff North Wales Crusaders head coach Anthony Murray uh, I'll and do that one next after this one <laughs> you re- are you going to edit this in and out or is this just no that's just how we're doing it <laughs> ok North Wales Crusaders head coach Anthony Murray it's a short news this week uh, and his assistant Alan Hadcroft will leave the club at the end of the 2016 season Murray joined the club in 2014 as an assistant coach to Clive Griffiths uh, before taking over a couple of months later Later, on the back of his and Hagcroft's effort at the back of the 2014 season, they both signed permanent contracts ahead of 2015 and guided the club to the iPro Sport Cup final that year. It's poisonous, isn't it, being, uh, being I, I, I mean, winning the iPro Sport Cup? But no, do you think these guys have stepped away rather than been pushed? Up? North Wales are probably slightly disappointed with the season mm. this year, but 
I wouldn't think they're overwhelmingly disappointed given the challenges they faced at the start of the year with basically a, a very yeah. threadbare squad situation. They started losing players to slightly bigger clubs, clubs like Rochdale and places like that started taking some of the talent from them, didn't they? Yeah, I, I would suspect that, you know, I believe Anthony Mush from Down Under, maybe he's got an opportunity to go coach back in his homeland and he you could know, end just, up at just, somewhere just like Keithley. Back or go and exactly move on to move on to a different club. Um Okay, uh, former Whitehaven coach James Coyle will take charge of Hunslet next year. See, everyone's moving around. Uh, with Matt Bramold departing, head coach Bramold will leave the club following the completion of the 2016 season uh, and upon expiry of his current contract. Coyle will be assisted by the vastly experienced Steve Deakin, the former Whitehaven, Barrow, Huddersfield, London, Oldham, Keithley, Sheffield and Catalan Dragons reserve grade coach. Uh, also assisting the coaching team will be consultant conditioner Dave Bell, the former Harlequins Rugby Union and Lee Centurions conditioner. Yeah. Big changes. Yeah, and uh, sounds like positive stuff for, for Hunslet. The, Absolutely. The, the and, so they shall, and so they shall again, Mark. Yeah. There you go. Uh, New South Wales State Police are investigating alleged match fixing in the NRL. Players and officials are amongst dozens of people expected to be interviewed in the coming months. The well, NRL... Steve Matt hasn't had his phone taken away. No. He has hasn't. Has he? He hasn't. He hasn't, though. No, he hasn't. But has he really? I don't, there had to be a whole news article about him. How he hasn't had yeah. his phone taken yeah. away. So, but look at me winking, has he? No, no, he hasn't. That's what the news article says, Tom. He hasn't. I'm so confused. Why would we need a story that says Steve Matai hasn't had his phone taken off him? Well, because two matches from the 2015 season are already investigating, both involving Manly. <laughs> in August, Nothing to do with Steve Matai. In August, media reported a seventh round match this season between Manly and Parramatta was being investigated for suspicious battling oh. activity. Parramatta scored three tries in the final 12 minutes to win 22 10. Mark, I'm friends with Steve Matai on Facebook. Should we just ask him? <laughs> oh, yeah. I really am, yeah. He's, he's like my one of my most. No, he's, he's the most famous guy I'm friends with on Facebook. He's not been had his phone taken away from him. Well, well, if I send him a message and he doesn't reply, well, no, he has, How often we? do you send him messages? All the fucking time. <laughs> Me and Steve Matai, we swap tips on nutrition and, and he gives me a lot of tips for betting. Absolute bullshit. <laughs> I'll show you that we're friends, though. <laughs> I'll prove it to you. Um... And finally, but hopefully that well, we've made light of it, but hopefully that that story really. Yeah, if anyone's been enough of a print to fix matches, then they deserve ban- banning for yeah. life. Absolutely. And finally, Josh Hodson and James Graham have been selected. No, no, we missed one out. What have I missed out? The because resi- you've had me chopping and changing. The residency period one. Oh yes, the residency period to become eligible to play international rugby league for the country is being lengthened from three to five years. The RLIF is bringing in the changes as of October the 1st this year. I think it's a strong move to stop the top-tier nations poaching away island talent yep. and, and that sort of thing. So I, fun. I, I, I like it. Big, big fun. Yeah. I'm fine. Like, get, getting rid of it completely isn't... I, I wouldn't well, necessarily incrementally support maybe, that, but, but this is making it more of a commitment to that team, to that nation, that team. Yeah. Um, and then I'd go that other step as well of knocking off the grandfathers and just having it immediate parents too. Yeah. So... Then I think then would be in the position I would think is better. I agree. Okay. There you go. Um, yeah, because you're never going to get them, you know, they're not going to do what I want. It's too big of a sea change. Yeah. So at least incrementally making it m- tougher yeah. is, is something I can get on board and with. And then address the tier one, tier two nation thing and make sure that Australia don't stop people playing for Samoa and places like that and England don't stop people playing for Scotland or Wales yeah, or whatever. Precisely. Absolutely. And finally, Josh Hodgson and James Graham. What are you pfing at? An, an amazing three right. point from. Oh, we've got, we, we've got the Paralympics Paral- 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 wheelchair basketball yeah. on, haven't we? Yeah. Fantastic. I thought you were pfing at the story. No, no. Josh Hodgson and James Graham have been selected in NRL.com's Team of the Year. The team is put together based on the number of times each player has made Team of the Week throughout the regular season. And both Graham, who plays for the Canterbury Bulldogs, and Canberra Raiders' Josh Hodgson eventually made the 17 man squad. The team is selected, um, sorry, the team selected is separate from the NRL Dream Team, but gives a good indication into those that could be involved. It's yeah. not surprising, really, given the seasons that these two have had. No, well, Graham's perennial, perennially in, in every NRL team of the year every year since he's Been stopped there. biting Billy Slater's ear. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, 
good news for good news for us that our players are performing so well down under. Um, I had a couple of stories noted down that with that had come in late after mm-hmm. the rundown was put together to mention El, uh, Oliver Olivia Emil Elmer will be leaving Catalan at the end of the season. Going back to Lodzola, but not retiring. Loved Oli Elmer. Yeah, not retiring. I was thinking maybe there might be a place from at, at Wakefield with some of their departures. Is an old Wake was he at Wakefield? He was at well? Wakefield, yeah. Um, and thirty-seven-year-old. 